So we have Dr. Lucy Jones, Hi. the author of The Big Ones. Thank you for being here, hey, first of all. Thanks for having me. It's great to be up here. Yeah, I know being prepared is really the key, right? right? So Yeah, it depends on what you mean by prepared, though. You know, when we say it, we tend to think about, oh, make sure you have water. Do you know how to drop, cover, hold on in the event? It's all focused on that moment of the event. Really preparing it, though, is thinking about it in a bigger time picture and realizing you can prevent the losses. If you're living in a brick building, why aren't you getting your brick building retrofitted so it won't kill you in the earthquake? Mm -hmm. Or, and how we're going to be recovering. Those are as much a part of it as the moment at which the event happens. You know, if you walk around the Seattle area, you'll notice that. I don't know if you kind mm -hmm. of did a little tour, you'll see buildings, and I did that tour with Glenn Farley. He's like, you know those building, those big bars on the inside of the brick building, that's holding the thing together. For, right. for the big ones, so you're saying we need to do a lot more of that? All of that is really important. We know which buildings kill people. That doesn't make the building disappear. And it's not just who's in that building. Think about if you're next to that building and it's badly damaged, you're not gonna be allowed to use your own building during the aftershocks because it'll be too dangerous that it might further, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. of further damage. So, you know, we leave the cost of retrofitting just to owners, but the cost of not retrofitting falls on all of us. Mm -hmm. We have some video. I don't know if we can go to it real quick. Okay. Uh, this basically shows you this Cascadia subduction zone that we live in. Um, this yes. is what could, could, could take place if you see the ocean floor going underneath the North American plate. Right. So, uh, Dr. Lucy, uh, tell me a little bit about your experience with within your book. You, you were talking to people from the Japan quake in 2011. So what are we expecting here? Okay, for the same, they had the same type of situation there in Japan. In 2011, they had a magnitude nine. There have been magnitude nines here in the Pacific Northwest as well. The last one was in 1700, so a long time ago. Uh, when that happens, to be a magnitude nine, you have a really long fault. Mm -hmm. And it means that, you know, the whole state of Washington and Oregon are going to be right on top of the earthquake at the same time. Mm. The good news is your fault's offshore, so the intensity of the shaking here will not be as extreme as it might be. You know, when we run faults right through us in California, we might get, we get stronger shaking right on top of it. The bad news of being offshore is then it generates a tsunami. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, 15, 30 minutes after the event, that happened in Japan. It was an extraordinary experience for me to go and talk to women from that region who had lived a very constrained life. It's a very traditional part of Japan. The, the earthquake and tsunami destroys much of their communities. They've responded in such a positive way, starting nonprofits, starting businesses, helping their communities recover, and taking on new roles that really hadn't been part of their possible lives before then. So there can be a positive side to disasters, and that's what I try to talk about in the book. Hmm. Can we talk about your event tonight? Where are you? You are at Third Place Books? Third Place Books in Lake Forest. Okay, at yes. 7 7 p.m., 7 o'clock. And I'll uh, give a few examples of the stories of disasters. That's what I tried to do is use the stories of what's happened in the past to help us understand what might be in our future. Also, I want to tell everyone at home, you can text PREPARED as with the D, PREPARED, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and we will send you the link to all the information that we've been talking about. Also, you know, just the fascinating work that you do as a woman and a scientist. So. It's, right. yeah, it's been an interesting time where uh, when I was in grad school, I was the only woman. Now it's maybe, <laughs> now, it's <getting> more. <laughs> now it's more, it's probably about a third. The STEM project cool. helped with that. Now it's STEAM, yeah. right? Getting more people out in those, those fields. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Good information, taking something terrible and trying to find the positive spin on it.